What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Gary Russell Jr. and his take on Javante Tank Davis, and this is what he had to say. He said his whole career has been based on fighting smaller fighters. Wow. Gary Russell wants Javante Tank Davis to pick on someone his own size. The WBC Featherweight title holder has not been shy about calling Davis a weight bully over the past year. In the latest instance of his <clears throat> rant, Russell took exception to Davis' last fight at 130 pounds pay-per-view contest against Leo Santa Cruz, a four-division title holder who began his career at 122 pounds. After a few rounds, Davis lowered the boom on Santa Cruz, and we all know what happened. He was knocked out cold for over a minute. Scary shit. Okay. And Gary Russell has stated that he is not impressed. And this is what he continues to say. He says, Leo Santa Cruz was a smaller guy that was beating Tank's ass. If people want to be realistic about it. Okay. He said he was touching Tank. In my personal opinion, Leo won at least, to be fair, at least four to, uh, out of the six rounds that I have seen clear. I'm talking about crystal clear. <laughs> Tank was getting knots on his head and his and eyes and everything, man. Matchmakers. And of course, um, he said that Davis had problems making weight in the past, has fluctuated between 130 and 135. Gary Russell continued. He says, who cares? He fought Leo Santa Cruz, who was originally a 122 pounder. Realistically, before he moved up to 126 and he did his thing. He became the champion at 126. But Davis based his whole career off of fighting smaller people. Guys, smaller guys, everybody he's fought has been moving up in weight. Gary Russell is 31, 1, and 18 and is hardly a big fighter himself. And should he face Davis in the future, he would also be like Santa Cruz. So he says it'll be different because he says I have... Uh, a better skill set and the intellect would make me a supreme fighter over Javante Tank Davis. Hmm. Well, let me begin to counterpunch. Um, is what Gary Russell Jr. saying is true or is this just hating? Um, I think it's true. Look, you guys that follow this channel have always seen that uh, I've looked at Javante Tank Davis's resume I've looked at him it through and through, and I've seen, you know, it's a pattern with Javante Tank Davis, okay? Javante Tank Davis has a type of, uh, look at the fighters that he's fought, okay? Um, uh, he fought Hugo Ruiz, February 9th, okay? He was a guy that was coming from, to, uh, from featherweight. Uh, Jesus Cuellar, the same situation. Ricardo Nunez, the same situation. He fought Yoriokis Gamboa when he could no longer or made trouble making weight. Let's say that because he did make weight fighting Leo Santa Cruz. Okay. He um, didn't really, he had tr trouble making weight when he fought Yoriokis Gamboa. But a Gamboa, of course, is how old? 38 years old. 13 years older than him, might I add. He could have had him. I keep telling guys that. So he was an older fighter. But if you go back, even Pedraza, uh, Liam Walsh, these guys, if you look, he's had a trend of fighting smaller guys. He has. That's absolutely right. These guys have been, has came up, that has been, that took a nice little paycheck to move up to get knocked out. You know what I mean? So perception is everything. Everybody talks about Tank's power. Everybody talked about the power and the whooping he put on a welterweight. You know, and I guess that was supposed to shut everybody up. But to me, it just proved that Javante Tank Davis is supposed to probably be at 140, regardless of his height. I mean, Manny Pacquiao is 5'6". He's 5'5". Five five. He's a short guy, too. But that don't mean that he can't fight at 147 or 140. If Manny can do it, why can't Tank? If Tank is that great, he should do that. I said the same thing about Lomachenko. I hold these guys at high standards because everyone else does or their fans do. So don't protect them when they go moving up like Floyd and Manny did. See, those guys set a, a standard that is so high. So when you do talk about somebody at 130, 135, then they go to 140. It's only so many people that are, that's going to go up there to attempt that. Terrence Crawford is another one. That's why he's pound for pound the great, a pound for pound great fighter. 
Why? Because he started from a totally different weight class, from 135 to go to 147, and he's a champ in both. And the one in between, he cleared out the whole division at 140, right? So those are the type of things you look for when you're dealing with special talent. Now, does Javante Tank Davis have special talent? There's no way for us to know because he hasn't fought anyone. And the people that he has fought, Gamboa, he, he looks good on a resume. But by now, you know Gamboa is the guy that everyone wants to run to to fight when they don't want to take risk. Counterpunch. You know, and in what uh, along with what uh, Gary Russell said also about uh, Leo Santa Cruz, Leo Santa Cruz was touching him. He was beating him, and I think he was winning that fight until he got knocked out. He was really putting it to Javante Tank Davis. Javante Tank Davis, been a fair-skinned brother like he is, you could see marks and lumps. You could see the swelling, the inflammation around that evidence that he was getting touched. Okay? So, yes, I do agree with Gary Russell Jr. You know, I do agree with that. However, let me counterpunch Gary Russell Jr. for a minute. Gary Russell Jr. is in that same boat. He's a 126-pound belt holder. OK, and he would be in that same situation had he fight Tank Davis. So the first beginning of what he said, pick on somebody his own size. Well, I don't really know that that's true because Gary Russell Jr. is not the same size as Javante Tank Davis. I mean, fighting weight wise. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of these guys are accustomed to fighting at a certain weight, but calling him a weight bully. OK, that, that's a fair assessment. Why? Because he had problems making weight at 130. He had problems making weight at 135. Can he hit like a tank? Of course he can. But the man, that's what you call a weight bully. You're bringing people up to fight you and beating you up or beating them up rather, <laughs> right? So it's one of those situations where I definitely see the pattern. But if Garrett Russell Jr. fights Javante Tank Davis and he ends up getting knocked out like Leo Santa Cruz, like Hugo, uh, I forget his name, right? Like Hugo did, like, like Cuellar did, if, like Pedraza did. If he gets knocked out like those guys, he joins that club. But after that, I don't want to hear shit because you are the guy that claimed you were so much better, right, than those other guys. So you got to ask yourself a question. Are you saying everything and are you saying all this to get a fight made? Or are you just talking shit? Even though the shit makes sense, you know, but if you get the fight and you lose, that shows, hey, is this man really beating weight bullies? Because you're putting yourself in the same situation. If I'm Gary Russell Jr., I would want him to fight someone at 135, a credible 135. You know, he hasn't fought that credible guy yet at 135. Davis has not. So... Anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Gary Russell Jr.'s remarks towards Javante Tank Davis. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunched. Peace.